subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon, so you never miss any video from my channel. Yo, welcome to Camera TV. Um, make sure you like, subscribe, and share, share all cool things like Facebook and Reddit and Instagram and wherever else. And guys, as you can see, I'm not at the home base here. You know, I'm I'm out on the road right now. So, um, but it doesn't stop me from dropping videos and you know interacting with y'all and letting y'all know what the news is. Um, there's some people I think definitely needs to step up their OTAs tomorrow. Um, well, not people, more positions. I'm really interested in some position battles. And I'm definitely going to get into that with you guys. And also, I just seen somebody got a release that um we might need to look at. Because he could be a good addition to our team. Free HE is never never over. So, we'll just get into that. So, let's get started. So, the first position battle that I'm looking into as far as OTAs goes, y'all already know. It's the wide receiver room. You know what I'm saying? Seeing how that plays out. Um... I, you know, where is DJ Moore end up? Because I think DJ Moore will be starting slot corner. No, start slot receiver, I'm sorry. Um, but he's probably going to be able to take over our number one receiver spot because I think Torrey Smith is a good receiver. But I don't think he can be I – think, I think DJ Moore, because of his route running and because he, he's very good at catching the ball, he's not – you know, Torrey Smith has been – like a Ted Ginn, you know, he's like 50, his hands are 50-50, you know what I'm saying? So – I think DJ Moore will end up beating him out as far as the number one receiver, you know, over time. But um, the question that leaves is that, you know, where does Curtis Samuel end up? You know, because if DJ Moore is a starting receiver, um, slot receiver, does that mean Curtis Samuel going to be the, you know, the second tier behind Torrey Smith, or does he, you know, or does he stay in the slot, or you know, how would that play out with him? That's pretty interesting. Also, the Demir Bird situation. Now, mind you. We traded for Torrey Smith, and I think Torrey Smith will be the starter in the beginning. Um, but Demir Bird played very well last year, and he could be a very dangerous vertical threat. So is he gonna, you know, beat out Torrey Smith, or is, you know, how he gonna play out in that situation, that scenario? That's gonna be interesting. Also, I think the only person whose situation is pretty constant would be Devin Funches, and the reason why is because one, his age, he's a pretty, you know, he's a pretty young receiver. I think he just turned 24 years old. Two, his skill set, you know, he's a he's the bigger receiver on our team. He's the, you know, contested catch, jump ball receiver, which we don't really have anybody else who can do that currently. You know, Torrey Smith is more, you know, like, like I said, separation type of guy. So is Curtis Samuel. So is Demir Bird. I mean, the only other person you can kind of say would be able to do that is DJ Moore. And... I don't think they want. I think they want DJ Moore because his, uh, you know, separation, his route running, which causes separation for him. I don't really think they want him to do that many jump balls. And I know a lot of you guys have been saying I've been forgetting about Jarius Wright. I am. I have not forgot about Jarius Wright. I think he's gonna be, you know, a good special team player. I think he's gonna be, you know, a part of this offense. But the problem I see is we got we drafted DJ Moore, who's probably gonna be in the slot. We got Chris Samuel, who might be behind DJ Moore, you know, because obviously he's a high. He was a second round draft pick last year. So, Jarrett Wright kind of gets the short end of the stick because he is predominantly a slot receiver. So, in his situation, he I think he'll be helpful to the younger receivers because he knows the playbook. He's been with North Turner for a long time. And he can help basically teach them the playbook, you know. Um, but it also is like, let's be honest, guys. You know, we have, we only have so many, you know, balls that we could throw. And so many people can catch him. So, Jarris Wright, I think he's going to get the short end of the stick. I think he's a good player, but I think he's going to be more of a special team slash, you know, come in and contribute type of player instead of an impact player, which, you know, some of you guys think he is. Because DJ Moore, I think he's going to start off in the slot. I think our starting lineup as far as receivers is going to be Torrey Smith on the right side, Devin Funches on the left side, and DJ Moore in the slot. So, that's how I see it playing out. Um, so I don't see much room for Jarrett Wright. I mean, it sucks, but I just don't see it. Um, but we'll, you know, I could be wrong. We'll see what happens. But you know, I, I'm I don't think they'll waste the talent of all these young receivers that they have for an older receiver in Jarrett Wright. Who, yeah, they call him Mr. Third Down, but I think DJ Moore has DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel both have a higher ceiling than he does. The other position battle I'm looking forward to is the cornerback position. Obviously, y'all know why in the cornerback position there's a lot of influx going on. With, you know, Dante Jackson coming in and, uh, you know, Ross Cockrell, James Bradbury. You know, is James Bradbury going to lose his position? I don't think he will, but, you know, it's a possibility, man, because he has not been living up to the billing. 
Um, <clears throat> now they're saying that Dante Jackson will get a shot outside. So, you know, I, you know, at first I thought he was going to be a slot corner, but, you know, he might have the possibility to become an uh, outside corner, man. So that's definitely interesting. Um, the Ross Cockrell kid, man, if, if he's, he goes to camp and he starts balling, maybe, you know, we'll have to have a serious conversation if, you know, should it be Dante Jackson and Ross Cockrell and James Bradbury as a backup or, you know, you know, whatever. But, you know, all that stuff's in flux. I don't think anybody's position is safe in that situation. I definitely don't think Captain Mullen's position is safe. I think Captain Mullen might get cut, man, depending because, you know, last year he wasn't playing up to snuff. He uh, also was complaining about his, his snaps, even though he wasn't playing up to snuff. And, um, yes, he's a, you know, a wealth of knowledge, but, you know, if, you know, practice OTAs is going on and training camp is going on and all these Cornell is playing better than him, Dante Jackson playing better than him, all these people playing better than him, and they look at the cap hit, man, they might be like, hey, let's let this guy go and go with our young squad. So all those things could happen. All those things are crucial because it will definitely dictate towards our, um, you know, our secondary. And, you know, everybody's saying Rashad Golden is going to play safety, you know, which I think he will. But, you know, maybe he, he might get a shot out of cornerback. I don't, I don't see them having an issue with that. You know, he might have a, you know opportunity to play cornerback or just be a safety or whatever. So there's a lot of question marks in the secondary in general. But the cornerback position especially, I definitely think that's going to be a good matchup. I think uh, Dante Jackson is really going to push a lot of guys. And I think, you know, like like Ron Vera said, man, he brings that swagger that we, we missed out, you know, when Josh Norman left. So I definitely am interested in that. And to be honest with you, I wouldn't mind Dante Jackson starting, you know. But uh, I want to see how this Ross Cockrell kid do because he played, supposedly he played good in Giants. I want to see how he plays because, you know, he's a bigger corner, he's six foot. Let's see, man. You know. And last but definitely not least, one of the most important position battles, offensive line, especially left guard. Now, mind you, here's my thing, man. Uh, I've been on record saying Taylor Moten should be starting left guard. Hopefully, he, he does become a starting left guard. But, you know, if, now, mind you, this is something that, uh, development that happened recently. If, you know, let's say nobody's really taking over that mantle, nobody's really taking over that position, like, you know, which would suck because Taylor Moten was a second round pick also which would kind of, you know, worsen our, our offensive line situation in the first place. The Bills just, ex you know, released uh, Richie Incognito because he didn't want to be there anyways. He was just pissed off. He retired. He semi-retired. He wants to play for a contender, and we can be that contender, you know. And, uh, you know, yeah, Richie Incognito had his own issues with the bullying and all that type of stuff, whatever, but I think that's kind of past him now. I do think he's, you know, he could be – uh, prima donna in certain situations, obviously, you know, with the Bills situation, he, he was like, he was just kind of complaining and whining, but he is a very good left guard. So, would we, but you you also have Jari, um, Jari Evans, from uh, who used to play for Green Bay. He's also a free agent. So, you got some free agent guards that you might want to look take a look at, man, especially, that's if, you know, the undrafted, the three undrafted guards that we got, and Taylor Moten, and Jeremy uh, Sorelli's is not living up to the billing. But hopefully, we don't have to do that. But Richie Incognito, I think, would be the best of the free agent class that we can snatch up, whatever. And, um, yeah, like I said, he might have a personality situation, but he does play angry, which I do like. And, you know, he's, he's a physical guy. So, you know, obviously, offensive line, particularly left guard, because every other position is kind of solidified. The right tackle position is solidified. Um, you know, obviously, right guard, Trey Turner, solidified. Uh, the center, you know, Ryan Khalil until he retires. Um, and then, you know, obviously left tackle, even though I think somebody else should be left tackle, Matt Khalil is under contract for a while, so he's probably solidified. So the only situation we have right now is left guard, and it's a pretty big hole to fill. So hopefully Taylor Morgan can take over that position. But if he doesn't, we can always check out for Virginia Incognito. You know what I'm saying? So look out for that. You know, let's see if we decide to pull the trigger on that. That will be determined after OTAs. I guarantee you after OTAs, if they're not living up to the, um, the billing, either OTAs or training camp, you know, depending on if he gets picked up by them. If, because you have to talk him out of being retired, which, you know, I don't think this would be hard, but he definitely wants to play for a contender. So if you're not, if he doesn't see his contender, he probably won't come out of retirement. But, um, you know, it's either office, 
you know, at the OTAs or training camp. You know, depending on how people play, we'll see if we, uh, you know, talk to Virginia Incognito and see if he wants to be a Panther. So keep an eye on that. You know, that is a bubbling story that, you know, we just have to keep an eye on because that left guard position is in flux right now, and Richie Incognito, I think, could come in and fill that spot. I think I think Taylor Moore should be able to fill that spot, but we'll see how that plays out. Well, that's it for me, guys. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share for share all cool things like Facebook and Reddit and Instagram and wherever else. And guys, get in the comment section. Let me know about you know how you feel about the OTAs, the position battles, who you think gonna stand out. Like I think DJ Moore will stand out in the OTAs. I think um I think Ian Thomas will stand out, you know. And there's some guys that, you know, that I think will really stand out in OTAs. But let me know some of the guys you think will really show out in OTAs. I think Dante Jackson should show out show out too. Um, but we'll see how Rashad Golden plays and uh, you know, Haynes and a few other players. But let me know how, who you think is going to stand out in OTAs, who you think is going to play horribly in OTAs, and who you think might get cut or, you know, or might lose their position because of how they play is. I think the main person that might get cut because of their play in OTAs will be Captain Mullinan. I think he, you know, I, I think he's lost a step. I'm just going to be honest with you. I think he lost a step. So um, I think he's he might be the one on the chopping block. Um... And there's a few others. If you definitely want me to make a video about, you know, who I think is on the chopping block and who might be uh, cut after, you know, OTAs and training camp, I can do a video about that. Um, but we'll get into that another time. Uh, make sure you check out the L Camera TV merchandise. That link is in the description below. Check out the Patreon page. That's also in the description below. Check out my dog Renan Steam's uh, page. You know, he's a comedian, funny guy. There's a whole bunch of stuff, music, comedy, whole bunch of stuff. I think you really guys would like his uh, Disney story. It's really dope. Um, I think I'm going to put that on the end screen, too. Um, and uh, share with your Panther family, friends, any Panther people you know. Share with NFL people all over the world. Let them know El Camera TV is out here and Panther Nation is out here. And um, I'll see you guys next time. Hopefully in home base, but we'll see what that situation is. Um, so I'll see you all next time.